Well, welcome back to another episode of From Tailors With Love. I'm joined by my co-author, good friend, Matt Spacer of Bondsuits.com. How are we doing today, Matt? Hey, P, I'm great. How are you doing? Real good, thanks, pal. And joining me, returning guest, friend of the show, Elliot Mason of Mason & Sons. How are we doing today, Elliot? I'm great. Couldn't be better. Lovely to see you both. Lovely to have you on, mate. Been a while. Elliot, please, we're talking about the Italian job today. Maybe you can just give us a memory of when you first got introduced, the first time you saw it. Your overall thoughts on the film? Um, that the Italian job for me holds almost as dear a place in my heart as the uh, as the early Bond films. Um, it, it, I was introduced to it from a very young age because of my father, of course. Um, <laughs> when that was, I can't remember. It probably was at an age where I didn't quite understand it, quite didn't understand all the humour involved in it. But I have lost count. I have no idea how many times I've seen it. I mean, it must be the same amount of times I've seen Goldfinger or something, something like that. But um, yeah, it's, uh, I've got, it's, it is without doubt one of my favorite films. And that is the putting aside the projects we've done around it and the, and the sort of um, links that some of our brands have with it. It's that completely. So before we had those brands, I loved it. So um, it's, it's real, it's special for us. I can't wait to unpack all that, all the stuff you did with Matthew Field as well. And like I say, some of the lines that you got under the umbrella over there. But before you do, Matt, I've got to ask you, when, when was the last time you saw this? Yeah, you know, I, I mean, I remember the first time I saw it was probably about eight, nine years ago. So I, I haven't, I, I, it's not as part of my life as it, as it has been for Elliot, but it's, um, you know, it's just one of those films that's just the style really sticks with you. It's, it's like you, you watch it and then you just want to put on the suit. Yeah. And it is, I think I texted you last night, Matt. I said, if you're here for the cars and the suits, you're going to have a great time with this movie. <laughs> Elliot, maybe you can talk a little bit about, oh, can we start with the shirts, first of all? The, so the Mr. Fish shirts you can see the name in the background as he's being tailored um maybe you can just give us a little bit of an insight either to that scene or so how you got mr fish under your wing yeah absolutely um it was around it was not long after we had uh, relaunched sinclair when a the opportunity came up for us to acquire the mr fish brand um with and the uh, acquisition was done through his estate, through his family, who, who we've got to know uh, quite well uh, in the subsequent years. Unfortunately, Michael passed away a few years ago, but we, uh, his legacy is certainly living on at Montague Square and, at, and everywhere else that we're operating in. Um, and the, uh, it was common knowledge that Michael had made the shirts uh, for the film. Uh, his brother had also verified that for us and I think in Matthew had also verified it in his research that he's done in the film um, over the many years I think <laughs> he's loved it from an early age as well um, but the the most amazing moment was only quite recent really in the last I think it was New Year's Eve one or two years ago and mum and dad was stayed in and they watched the Italian job they'd only seen it 50 times, but it was New Year's Eve, so they watched the Italian job. And um, at Montague Square, we're fortunate to have this big television on the wall, and I don't think they'd ever seen it. I, my father probably hadn't ever seen it on such a big screen since it was first on in the cinema. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but the, the, the reason that, that that was so significant was that in that scene where Michael comes out of the nick and goes to see his shirt maker, my mum pointed at the screen and said, look, it's Mr. Fish. And my dad sort of said, yeah, yeah, we know it's Mr. Fish. And they said, no, look, it's Mr. Fish. And you could, and there was the orange sign and it said Mr. Fish. And we'd never noticed it before. Um, and that was a really, it was a Christmas miracle. Well, New Year's <laughs> <laughs> It is a blink and you miss it moment, isn't it? Because yeah, it really is. It really is. Um, and I think it was that point where we would ju we just knew we had to recreate the shirts, you know, it, it, we had to do it. And, um, and that was also a lot of fun in the great thing about that particular scene is that there's quite a number of movie stills or um, behind the scenes photos that were taken. So 
we actually created a number of shirts that what didn't feature in the film, but Michael was obviously trying on during the fittings or behind the scenes or the wardrobe check. Maybe they were trying a few different outfits. So we have these fantastic uh, images that show the leaf print shirt and the candy pink shirt. I think those are the two main ones where you don't see them in the film, but we've got a picture of Michael Caine on set wearing them. So we just thought these are these are really fun shirts. So, so we, that's why we made those two. Uh, so, uh, some people had asked, you know, that. I don't remember seeing those in the film, but that, that was the reason. And we wanted to put a bit of a collection together as well. And it was a good reason for us to do that. Yeah. Did you have the leaf print one where he's trying it on and asking the tailor there and he's saying, you know, shorten the arms and this and not a gorilla. Yeah. Yeah. Forgive me. I, um, I can't remember which way around it is, which, which of the shirts he doesn't wear and which he does, but, but there were one or two that we, uh, you don't see in the film that, that we made anyway. Matt, over to you. Talk to me about some of the suits and what, what really stood out to you with some of the Michael, Se- Michael Caine, Doug Hayward suits that he was wearing. So these suits look very modern. They look very, very modern for um, the late 60s, but they also still look very modern today. They, they look very fashion forward. They, I feel like they could wear these suits exactly as they are today and you'd look you know, just as fashionable as Daniel Craig does in the James Bond films. So, you know, um, I, probably the one that stands out to me the most at first, I would say, is the uh, the gray shark skin suit. I think it's just, it's the kind of suit that you know, anyone can wear. And uh, so I think when I when I saw this, you know, it was, you know, that, that first suit that he really gets in character. And it's just, I think it just sets the stage for the style of the film. Elliot, do you get a lot of questions about that suit? Yeah, in fact, um, out of the three suits that we uh, recreated uh, from the film, that is the one that we has been most sought after and um, people have gone for most frequently, um, which is no surprise because I think it bears quite a resemblance to our mid-grey sharks in conduit cut suit. They're not a million miles apart. So I, I, <laughs> I can say I, I, if I was a betting man, I would have bet that that was uh, Matt's favorite suit out of the, uh, the ones he wore in the film. Right, but, but you know, I, I also love the, the beige suit. Now the beige, beige linen suit. Yeah, the beige linen suit was um, a lot of fun to create and one of the most uh, interesting elements to it that, well, that I believe is the most interesting element to it is these patch pockets with the slanted flaps on it at the, a navy double-breasted suit that we made and the uh, shark skin suit were both made to measure. Um, but our made to measure ateliers couldn't do the patch pocket with um, the slanted flap on it. So Henry made uh, the bespoke one, um, which I've got here. So I'm going to have a look at this now. Yeah, it's like QVC, but I'll do a close up. <laughs> nice, uh, beautiful. So yeah, you got to swing by the YouTube to have a look at this beauty. I love the rounded hem on that. You got that single. I mean, it just it, yeah. And I mean, it's just perfect that Henry made that because Hen- Henry Rose was um, you know, he worked with with uh, Hayward himself. He certainly did. Yeah. So um, there's some great photos. I'm sure. I'm sure if you ask Henry, he'll come on the podcast and maybe I can take some photos he has of uh, him in Doug's shop many moons ago. Um, oh. He's very young. Yeah, I'm sure there's some great pictures. Um, so yeah, you'll have to you'll have to chat to him, and I'm sure he'd love to share his. Uh, I mean, he may already have done so with you, but I share his. Um, yeah, we had him. We had him on talking about Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> How he measured up Tyson. I love that. So you know, one one of the most interesting things I discovered about this uh, about the beige suit recently was that it, it's Michael Caine wears it in another film. He wears this suit, um, so the Italian job is from 1969, but in 1968, he did a film called Deadfall. And this suit features very, very prominently throughout this film. He wears no. it in a bunch of different manners. No, no one seems to ever mention this. I don't know if any, anyone has ever seen Deadfall, but it's um, <laughs> quite an enjoyable film. I, I, I watched it because I love the John Barry uh, soundtrack and John Barry is in the film as a conductor. He's That's very, John Barry has a prominent role great. as a conductor in this film. But, but Michael Caine, in many scenes, 
he, he keeps sense. coming back to this beige linen suit. It has the same, the, the, you know, the same patch pockets with the slant. It, it, you know, Matt, you've blown the lid off this thing. <laughs> it's, I mean, I, I, I do recommend that anyone who, who likes Michael Caine in the 1960s watch Deadfall. Between 68 and 69 exclusively. If you're that, <laughs> if you're that kind of Michael Caine guy, then you're right in it. That's interesting. Admittedly, I've never seen Deadfall, but uh, no, I'm, right. Wow. I'm no, that, I'm being... Yeah, I'm going to be seeking that one out, um, Elliot. So you, do you get when you when your clients come in and asks maybe either for the the linen or the the shark skin suit there? Do they ask for the exact styling, like the free button styling, or do yeah, they kind of do different twists? Uh, no, so so far. Um, they've gone for the exact styling. I think, to be honest, because if they didn't go for the exact styling, it would be the mid-gray shark skin conduit cut suit or similar enough to it. So if they're coming for that specific, if they want the Italian job suit, they go for uh, styling details as per. And the only exception to that is um, the original had belt loops. And some of our customers prefer um, side adjusters. But if you were going for an authentic recreation, you'd go for belt loops, and it's got those lovely dog mouth pockets on as well. And the beige suit actually we made with um, belt loops on it as well. I can't remember about the double breasted, I'd have to double check that. But it's the, uh, the, the navy double breasted suit with the white shirt and the white tie. I, when I first saw it, I wasn't sure, but that white on white, that white tie on a white shirt with the navy double breasted suit. I, I I think it was it might be my favorite complete look in the film. Maybe it's tough to beat that linen suit though, because the shirt tie pocket square combination, Evan sunglasses, of course. <laughs> I mean that that one is hard to beat as well. Do you know what? I'm glad you mentioned that. That's the one that I picked out. That's the one where he's doing the intros to everyone in the gang at the board meeting, right? And he's saying yeah. right you know you're doing this meet the drivers and we've got to work as a team that means you got to do exactly <laughs> as i say <laughs> it was a really good line very brian clough-esque but uh, yeah i really love that um i i gotta have a mention about the 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 camp freddy character as well because i mean he if you guys watch the film again or whenever you want to see the film he wears a different outfit in almost every scene i mean so kane wears the kind of the beige suit and he has that in a few different scenes and it does get a lot of mileage but camp freddy jesus christ that he, he has he's even got a scene with noel coward in the prison and then like two scenes later he's in the same position but he's wearing an entirely different outfit uh, and these look well these look like they're cut from the cloth of mr fish because they're just so out there with the shirts not only the shirts but the the extreme velvet jackets i mean do you get any requests for those at all <laughs> Um, we've got a, we've made some um, suits for uh, some rock stars that are a bit more extreme than uh, the more day-to-day -day stuff that we do. And we've been uh, working on some more print shirts as well. Um, a couple of customers have had us make the Italian job shirts with um, an original Mr. Fish collar, which is uh, m much more extreme. Um, I actually... Um, have a few uh, original Mr. Fish shirts. So I sent one to uh, our makers in Italy and they copied the, the collar pattern. It's quite out there. So not every customer goes for it, but um, it's, uh, it's certainly a really nice feature. We've got a sort of a medium, uh, medium extreme one as well. So that, that it gives a bit of a nod and a wink to that sort of that very 60s shape without being too out there. Because my, the, Michael Caine's shirts in uh, the film, they had a very large collar on them, but you you don't really see them because they're always under the lapel. Right. And the ties as well, um, the uh, tie we recreated with Jay Canella, that was a proper Mr. Fish uh, kipper tie, so it was very wide, but we didn't make, we made them at a more uh, modern width. Um, I think I'm the only person who wears kipper ties at the moment. So <laughs> <laughs> I have to do a collection of those. Yeah, that kipper tire where he's he's going around the minis and he's seeing the guy spraying the bus. I mean, that's the only thing that I could actually focus on was the, the width of that tire that's swinging around. <laughs> that, was, that was huge. Uh, I, I had a question about the, some of the fabrics that you use for the shirt. Did you get any, were there any kind of original bolts from the Mr. Fish days or were they all kind of yesteryear now? 
No, no, absolutely not. Unfortunately, all of the um, all of the Mr. Fish, vintage Mr. Fish stuff that we currently own is things that I've found over the past few years. Um, the the family estate own a few things. I think they've got uh, the prototype for the um, Rumble in the Jungle, Muhammad Ali fight, where Mr. Fish designed and made his robe. They've got the uh, prototype for that. But unfortunately, there was a fire at one of the Mr. Fish stores. I can't remember which year. So lots of things went up in smoke. Um, and I don't know. I think I I would imagine that the business fortune business's fortunes in the late sixties and seventies meant that they may have had to uh, hand over some assets at some point, so there might not have been much to uh, to pass on. So the all all of the things that we've made uh, in the as part of that collection are similar to what we've done with a lot of the bond stuff. Is um, just like we did detective work, just like Matt does, and. Um, we found the movie stills, we watched the movie 10 times on ultra Blu-ray and uh, what have you, and, and, and just research to, to fire, and, and gut instinct. I mean, one of the interesting things about, for me, about the uh, Italian job shirts is all of the shirts um, were double cuff. Um, so the, the leaf print shirt with, uh, I think one customer asked for double cuffs. Most of the customers, because we do them all made to order, one of the, uh, most customers asked for a button cuff with that leaf print because I'm yet to come across a cuff link which I think is going to look right with that leaf print shirt. It's just so out there. Maybe a nice mother of pearl cuff link or something. But um, yeah, it was, it was all done by um, photos and, and the movie stills, really. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a film that you can really just drown yourself in with the clothes and the cars. I know that you did a project with Matthew Field when you rolled up to Montague Square in one of those beautiful Aston Martins. And the, it's, it's something that you can take away. I mean, the women look great. <laughs> We've got to say that. I think even the women clothing looks terrific. There's locations around London. I, I went down to Notting Hill. So in the, when they go around and they give them a kick in, there's actually that that place is still there and the guy who's in Alice's who's on the corner there I think his dad was even in the film like as an extra just hanging outside the shop so when I went in there recently in Notting Hill and spoke to him I said how many people come down here for the Italian job because it's I think more famous for Paddington I think they f filmed some scenes with Paddington Bear in there Matt you know what I'm talking about here the uh, the, the the scene where they where they go around and they have to give him a kick in on, on behalf of Mr. Bridger. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that, that place you can still visit. It's there. It's like a garage now. But the, the guy said I was one of the first persons to go there to ask about the Italian job. <laughs> 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 Which, I don't know. But, maybe, but, maybe, but, but, but the guy there knew about oh, yeah. that the Italian job. Oh, yeah. Because he said, like, if you roll, the, roll that scene back, his dad's in the background smoking a cigarette. So... Uh, <laughs> He had, he had some good stories. So if you're in Notting Hill and you know the area, then you'll get, you'll get a few good stories out of that guy. I digress. Uh, Matt, did you have anything else for Elliot while we got him on the line? Oh, well, you, you know, um, that, that, um, that, that suede peacoat in the film, that, that is, I think, one of the greatest pieces. Where he wears with the white roll neck. Yeah, I, uh, think, yeah. That, I think that piece something that that you know you can still wear today it's, it's quite luxurious i'd say but it's yeah we we were looking at it just the just the other day because we will um very soon be launching a suede version of the jacket that you're wearing today um, and we looked at the italian job what after we'd um we have the stock so they'll be going on the website very soon but after we made it we Dad and I were just chatting and said, what well, didn't Michael wear one a suede jacket in the Italian job? And we looked and we both thought well, that would be a nice one to recreate. The only thing is it does have that very round sort of 60s, 70s collar, which is very much of its time. So it's whether or not I'd be one to do some, to bring it to mo a modern version of it, maybe. But Yeah, I think a modern version of that would look great. But um, a, a, a suede uh, safari jacket is wonderful as well. <laughs> I, I, I do think of Roger Moore and the Persuaders. He, he had a beautiful suede safari jacket in there. 
Elliot, have you ever tailored for Michael Caine personally? If you don't mind me asking. No, we we've um, not looked after him. And uh, we, I think, just before um, Sir Roger passed away, there was reference to him perhaps bringing in one of his friends, and I'm sure it was um, it would have been, it would have been Michael. So um, so no, we've we've not uh, ever done anything with them. We. Uh, with Michael Caine or, or, or his uh, his estate, so uh, never say never. Um, yeah. The uh, the I should probably also so mention that um, I don't know if you're aware that the sunglasses that the uh, the guy is wearing in the opening scene driving the Mura, the Reynold sunglasses. Um, we're very good friends with Gareth at Reynold. He has brought that brand back to life, and those he has remade. He has remade those frames, and they. Um, that we have some some of them on our, our website even, but he's uh, relaunched that brand, um, and we will be next eight from the eighth to the tenth of June. We'll be at the Honourable Artillery Company City Concours event, um, and we're going to be promoting our uh, Italian job collection there. Matthew's going to come down and, and sign some books, and we'll have the the full collection, the Evan frames, the Reynolds sunglasses, as well as a uh, um, a big reveal for Mr. Fish, something that Dad and I and, and uh, some people have been working on that we're, we're launching a, uh, I don't know how to describe it without giving it away. So we've got a bit of a surprise there. So uh, if you're in London, then you should uh, come and see us. Is it the smock dress that Mick Jagger wore to Hyde Park. Is this the big reveal? Just raise one eyebrow for yes and the other one for anyway. Only in one size, Pete, and it fits you by chance. <laughs> Sold to this blogger here. Um, anyway, when, sorry, when was the dates for that? We'll throw it up on the website, but we'll. Eight, yeah, 8 to the 10th of June. Okay, all right, we'll keep an eye out and, and stay peeled to the uh, Mason and Sons website and their Instagram. I'm sure they'll be throwing up some links for that there. Elliot, um, Great pleasure having you on, mate. It's uh, always good catching up. I'm sorry it's been a bit truncated. This technology has not been with us as always, but uh, it's great to hear those stories. And the the Mr. Fish legacy lives on, certainly. And uh, you guys are doing a great job there, making sure that's staying alive. So thank you. Thank you very much. Lovely to see you both. Matt, great having you, you on, mate. Thanks. Take care, man. See you soon. Bye. Thanks. <laughs>